Stuart Baird, Joel Silver, we could call this a tale of two suits, I think. What do clothes make the man here? What does this tell us about each of you? Stuart Baird, you're the relaxed kind of no, laid-back type. I'm cheap. I just oh, the gap. I'm that's just the it. Gap. <laughs> and Joel Silver, the man in the suit here. Uh, that mean organized, right? Attentive to business. <laughs> the power tie. Um, Does this bespeak the truth when, about when you? Whatever you say, I'm with you. <laughs> pan, to the, pan to the shoes, you'll see the real <laughs> oh man. Oh my goodness, <laughs> indeed, really, seriously. <laughs> Amazing. I'd like to imagine a time when the two of you were in a room together and you're discussing the concept of this film. And at one point, one says to the other, yeah, and there's got to be a scene where there's a crash landing and we destroy half an airport. Um, I don't think Did that ever happen? That. No. Uh, not quite. We knew we would. Look, this is, a, this is an entertainment. We want to entertain the audience. We want to surprise the audience. It seemed a great, wonderful idea that he lands the plane at his own airport where he's learning to fly, where he, we've just seen him, or previous two hours before, seen him learning to fly. And it just happens that all his mates' planes happen to be lined up as they would be. So. And it's a grandiose idea. Mm -hmm. And at some point you said, okay, now how do we put this into practice? <laughs> do you reach for a storyboard, a pen? Take me through the process of shooting a scene like that. Well, you have the idea. Yeah. Then you, 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 you look at the a model or, or, or a plan of where what it would happen so you and then you construct a model no not necessarily you you look at a this is the airport this is where the planes would be and then i do with the storyboard artist a series of storyboards what i think would be interesting shots and you're wondering how much it's going to cost that's right always that's right do we use models we did we did use models yeah. for that mm -hmm. so that was all models amazingly lifelike yeah, yeah. brilliantly shot by peter donan and um, at the, the special effects department wonderful all i did was to draw the storyboards i happened to it's just happening and so it's uh, and that's all shot like at real time so what you saw in the movie and this is you know you shouldn't remember these things because it's just a it's a magic sound you sort of give it the size and scale of a real plane yes. when you saw them shoot that they went by real fast yeah. and you didn't really <laughs> see what we got until you look at it on the film and it it goes in slow motion and it was very very realistic now as editor and producer and second unit director i mean so i'm rolling the two of you all into one here in a way High concept ideas, grandiose projects are typical of both of you. Have either of you gone to the opposite end of that extreme and thought on a small, intimate chamber scale for a film? Or is that just not, Joel, is that not the kind of film you ever want to make? Um, I'm not saying I never want to Kind of, you know, as a producer, um, I find that the action genre allows me to be real collaborative because I mean, the movie making is a director's medium, and, and uh, you know, if you're dealing with a small comedy or a, a love story, the, the really producer, once it's been, the actors are hired and everything's shooting, there's not really that much for the producer to do until it's over. But these movies are, there's so much logistics, it's so much size and scale that it allows me to really get involved in the making of the movie, and, and that's what I like to do. So that's where I gravitate toward. I mean, I mean I, I, I'm not saying I haven't ever tried, I made a picture a year and a half ago at the Cone Brothers, which was a wonderful experience for me. No, nobody saw the film, but uh, okay. But uh, but you know, I, I I mean, I like these kind of movies because they're the kind of movies I like to see. And Stuart and I have done you know eight of these together, so it was logical for us to do one of these uh, for, as his first directorial um, work. Stuart, what about that? Is there an airplane thriller of some sort in your past or youth that just really fired no. you up and thought, no. I got to no. do this sometime? No, no, it's just a script. You know, it seemed like a good subject of this genre, a little bit different. It had some good twists and turns. It was a th more of a thriller and an and attention piece than just a crash bang wallop. We had an ensemble cast of, of, of interesting characters, ordinary, every guy, every day. Getting, I, and I wanted, you know, that's the sort of pr project I wanted to do. But that's not to say, I mean, I've worked on many sorts of pictures, from little ones to great big ones, and uh, it just happens that in the last few years, um, I used to try to do one in Europe and one here, and Europe dried up, and genre pictures here, through my association with Joel and through Dick Donner, and um, the studio were comfortable with me doing this sort of genre picture. Now, you did it here. Is America the best there is at producing this kind of picture? Absolutely. Why? Why in America is this the top thing? I mean, we just know how to do it well. You know, I mean, it just is a, is a tremendous, you know, history of us doing these kind of movies. And, and, you know, we have the technicians and we know 
the, the way to do it. And I mean, a lot of these things also, the, 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 te the, the, the technology is changing it all. I mean, the, the, the amount of, the combination of model shots and live action and model shots and CGI and, 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 and blue screen and green screen. I mean, there's so much stuff in this now. I mean, there's 350 uh, optical shots in this movie, which is, it's a giant optical effects picture, which you wouldn't really think about as opposed to a Star Wars or a Jurassic Park or something. But it's just to do the kind of stuff that we created, it involved the enormous amount of, of technical, you know, uh, virtuosity. And, and we have the ability to do that in this country. And I mean, look, some of the shots were done in England. I mean, there were, there's some wonderful optical houses in England too. But this is just the kind of movie that the... That England's we, uh, always been a, an a, a service industry to the American industry. We can do them as well, but generally through Iron Man in England and uh, Outland in England and a whole bunch of stuff. You know, they did the Bond, last Bond picture in England. So the England can do it, but it's really an adjunct of the American industry. Maybe it's because we're at an airport, but our time has flown. Okay. okay. Alas. All right. It's a pleasure to meet you nice both. Joel Silver, you. Stuart Baird. Thank we're talking you. about executive decision. I'm John Tibbetts for KCTV5 here at LAX in Los Angeles.